All right, let's do this thing. Um, boop. Hello. How y'all doing this morning? I am 30. That's a thing. That that is a thing. That's that's my husband. Um, I am a 30-year-old as of yesterday. So far, not that much difference. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like, you're 31. Oh, no. Sink. I don't know how to fix that. Is there a way I can fix that? I would have to, I would require help for the, for the troubleshooting on that one. Um, is there a thing I can do that fixes that sound sync issue? Hmm. Options? No. Oh, well, okay, there you go. I'm rhetorical meows thirty four. Okay. I am I'm in good company then, clearly. Welcome to being a person in your thirties. It's not that much different, honestly, so far. Um except that, you know the, the I'm in a position to be sadder about our country, I guess, than I was at the last election. Um but I don't know if that's specifically because I'm an adult now. I think I would have been pretty sad had this happened four years ago as well. So, you know. You mean you weren't an adult four years ago? No, I, you're not an adult till you're 30. That's how it works. Right. 30, 35. Nah, nah. I think I'm pretty adult now. Work I, with me here. I feel like an adult. <laughs> Well, so I know, like, Bill and Shambo and, um, and, and, um, Sean Plott are all older. Um, no, I wasn't sad about the last election. But my point is, I would have been sad, despite only being 26, I would still have been sad had this election happened four years ago. But, never mind. Um... I know those are, those three are older than me because they were in the year ahead of me at um, at USC, uh, and considering I went to USC like pretty much the earliest you can go trajectory wise if you don't skip any years, um, that means that like anybody who was ahead of me there had to be older than me. I think Sean Plot is old, only older than me by about like six months or something though. Like he's not substantially older than me, but yes. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, how are y'all holding up? Um, I don't want to talk, I don't want to spend a whole ton of time talking about politics, but for me it's a little cathartic to, like, to, to try and, like, voice things, because I'm still, I'm still trying to kind of work out mentally and emotionally what my own reaction strategy is going to be because I've, I've been in a couple different places about it and I've been in the like you know we need to we need to be empathetic towards people because it's like you know fear and anger and a lack of empathy that got us here in the first place um, and with you know that like by you know with but we have to do that without being you know trying to pacify people who are, and, and, you know, uh, indulging people in racism and homophobia and, and stuff like that. And, uh, but that's, that's a tough balance to strike. And then, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just generally like distressed and part of me wants to just like completely stop thinking about politics altogether for a while and then yeah yeah 
denial is uh, is an understandable place to be. And honestly, like I don't know if it's the, a substantially worse place to be than any other place right now. Because the problem is like, yeah, we're all upset, but like what what I want to know is like what are the action items, right? Like what are what's the thing? What are things we can do? Yeah, there's the safety pin thing. It's already been co-opted by some white supremacist groups, though, so, you know, be careful. I don't know what to do. There's protests in a lot of cities if you're if you're up for protesting. So that's like a that's a thing that you can do that's like an action you can take. But it's like I I feel like reaching out like empathy to me is is an active thing like a thing I can do is ask people who support Trump to like explain their reasons to me like explain what it is about Trump that makes them comfortable with him and confident in him and see if there's any like non-racism things that I can learn from that you know like if there's if there's anything I can get from them that will that I'll be able to like you know bring into my process and thoughts and like help them be able to come to a place where like they can they can feel like listened to and cared about and not have to vote for someone who's clearly like racist and homophobic and and like the worst person um and I, you know, I wish there'd been more of that prior to, um, prior to the election. I wish, like, I really want to vote for someone in the future who is a compromise candidate, who is, like, someone who will actually, like, listen to everybody and, like try and make compromises rather than just demonizing the other side all the time. And I actually think that that would have been probably what Hillary would have done in office, but it's not the platform she ran on, more the, more's the pity. So, um, I don't know. I'm just rambling. I'm sorry to talk about politics. I'm sure most of you at this point don't want to hear about politics stuff. Um, I feel safe saying it here because I'm a tiny channel and, like, you, you, y'all are my friends watching, like, I know all of you, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I don't know, I just, I want to have conversations with people, because I, I want reassurance that the half of the country that voted for Trump did not vote out of, like, malicious sentiment, because I know there are a lot of people who, uh, oh, I'll get to that in a s I can get I can talk about that too rhetorical meow if you want. Um I, I want I want to be um I want to be confident um in oh, what was I saying? I started to say something and then I got distracted by thinking about uh thinking about Bernie. Um I want, so I have a sort of fundamentally held belief that people are not fundamentally malicious. People don't enjoy hurting others. They're just, like, self-centered, basically. Like, they, they care about things that are meaningful and important to them. Um, and they have, you know more or less empathy depending on the person towards other people around them but primarily what they care about is themselves but they don't most people I would say don't actively want to hurt others and I I kind of need for my own sanity I need to maintain that belief um, <clears throat> and so what I what I want to do to maintain that belief is to is to figure out if they're not motivated by malice then what to them is more important than like their empathy than protecting other people because they have to know that like a vote for Trump is a vote against a good portion of America 
right? Like that's that's got to have been pretty clear that like you're not it's not a friendly vote towards Muslims and it's not a friendly vote towards women. So like what do you care about more than you care about that? Um and I think like learning that will help us be more inclusive and powerful in the future. At least that's what I'm I'm hoping Yeah, we're all, the thing is like, we all have that line where we care more about ourselves than we care about um, the suffering of others, right? Like, it's not the same distance for everybody, but the fact that we're not all, you know, spending a, an enormous portion of our income to, like a significant portion of our income to, to help, like, build infrastructure in Africa, you know, implies that, like, we know there are people who suffer more than us, but to some extent, we would like to be comfortable before we care about their suffering. Like, that's not a great thing. That doesn't say great things about humanity, but, like, we all have that line somewhere. And for a lot of people, you know, I grew up in, like, crazy rural, middle of nowhere, like, uh, small town America kind of thing. And for people who live there, <coughs> like, issues of, like, racism and police brutality and like Islamophobia and all stuff like that is as abstract for them as like suffering in Africa is for us because they live in an entirely white community and they just don't have to deal with this like it's not part of their daily lives um, I went to a, a high school with like 1200 students when I was there and there were fewer than 10 black people in the school. And I'm not just talking about students. I'm talking about staff, teachers. Like, I basically, I knew, like, one black kid in my entire school. Um, you know, like, it's just not, it's not a significant part of their daily lives. So for them, like, the idea of empathy and of, like, you know, equality is like it's a nice thing but it's very it's academic it's abstract like it's you know they don't want to think of themselves as racist but race is you know they have the privilege of not of just not thinking about it very much um <laughs> that is good jet lag that uh that your dad voted for the first time that's great um but yeah, so like I, you know, I imagine given that Pennsylvania went red this year, I imagine there are probably a lot of people from my hometown who voted for Trump. And I, you know, I don't understand their thought process and I feel like I should. I feel like I want to know what they were thinking because, you know, how else how else can we change it if we don't understand their motivations, right? Um and then there's Bernie, who, like, <clears throat> I know a lot of people who really liked Bernie and who voted for Bernie. I didn't vote for Bernie in the primary. Because I, although I love everything he says, to me he was not a compromise candidate. He's somebody who, like, has a very opinionated point of view, is not really that willing to listen to anyone on the other side, and would would not have had in a very a very effective presidency. I think probably he would have just been fought the entire time, and like I don't I don't have confidence that we, he could have gotten a lot done. Not in the way that I know that like Hillary's track record shows a lot of like listening to people and compromising with people. Um, and if you don't if you believe that Bernie would have been completely effective and gotten all his campaign promises across like. Maybe that's the case. I, you know, I can't predict the future. Like, I don't know what would have happened. So, like, you know, maybe that's that's fine. What I really don't like is that I've been seeing a lot of stuff from said, like, friends and family who, no, well, not family, but friends who voted for Bernie on my Facebook basically being really smug and I told you so about it. And it's like, that is also not what we need. Like, if we don't need, you know, like, anger, we definitely don't need smugness. Like we need to be pulling together on this and we need to be like vigilant to like protect people's rights given what's about to happen um in the next four years like we don't need it like internal strife is the absolute last thing we need um 
And I, so it also worries me because, like, the guy who posted that was like, um, you know, oh, Clinton supporters were, like, so mean to Bernie supporters and were saying, like, we don't need your vote. We can win this without you. Well, like, we were right and, you know, we told you so. And it's like, well, y you say that, but where were you hanging out? Because, like, the hugest problem, I think, with this election has been that we're all in our little internet bubbles – where we just never talk to anyone who doesn't agree with us. And I'm doing it right now, right? Like, I'm talking to you guys because I know that, uh, um, uh, um, I know that, like, you guys agree with me. So, like, I don't feel bad about saying this stuff here, but, like, and it, I don't feel scared about it, which is the point is, like, I, I might feel scared talking to people who are, like, Trump supporters about stuff like this, which is part of the problem. But anyway, like, um, we're all living in these, like, little little bubbles. So I think the bubble that he saw, like, the stuff that he was exposed to was people, like, saying, like, you know, fuck you, Bernie supporters, we don't need you. But that's not what I saw. All the social media places that I hang out leading up to the election were full of people saying, like, please, 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 Bernie supporters, like, what we need most right now is unity. Like, please, I know you cared about Bernie, and we, you know, we love Bernie, and, like, he'll be much more effective under a Clinton administration than he could be under a Trump administration. Please vote for Clinton. Like, please don't, you know, withhold your vote. And, you know, like, I saw a lot of, like, humility and... um and pleading and so I think we all we're all just in places where we want we see what we want to see and I'm thinking you know so I'm seeing all this stuff now that's just more fear-mongering that's just like oh my god things are going to be the absolute worst under Trump and like absolutely like we should be flaming him and we should be like you know we should be encouraging the electoral college to not elect him and you know like all this, like, really overblown rhetoric, and I'm like, save it, you know? Like, I didn't vote for him, but he's elected now, for better or for worse. We let him show us what he actually means to do. I have a feeling he's going to do very little. I have a feeling that mostly, most of our trouble is going to come from Pence, but that's, you know, neither here or there. I think what we need to do is sit back, take a breath calm the fuck down and stop listening to our little echo chambers. Stop listening to what everybody, all the fear that everybody, because fear is what got Trump elected, right? Like people are afraid of like change and differences. Like the fear is, fear is the enemy here. Fear is not like a tool that we also need to adopt. That's just going to make the division worse. Um, and so it's like, I think we need to calm down and save our our energy and our like you know our attack power as it were for when something is actually happening that we actively need to oppose um because almost certainly there's going to be something <laughs> Yeah, no, Huck's just wandering in and out. Um well, I have read some articles saying that, like, basically Trump is putting charge, uh, putting Pence in charge of a lot of stuff that vice presidents aren't normally in charge of because Trump is a lazy asshole who doesn't want to do anything. Um, I, I just said I shouldn't get like that, but I have a hard time talking about... Here's the thing. I want to be empathetic towards Trump supporters. I have a hard time saying anything nice about Trump himself. Um, I don't think he's evil. I don't think he's malicious. I just think he's... Um, incredibly arrogant and egocentric and an idiot and he doesn't want to do any kind of hard work like I don't think he understood that the presidency was going to be hard work and so he's going to foist off all that work onto people who will do it who will do a shitty job like Pence but anyway man don't let's talk about something nice I turned 30 and yesterday I went to the um, the experience music project museum uh, the EMP in Seattle, which is like a, a um, pop culture museum, which is like super cool. And I saw like a Star Trek exhibit and like a fantasy exhibit and an indie games exhibit and like a wearable art exhibit that was really cool. Um, 
out. It's a cool place. If you happen to be in the Seattle area, I recommend checking it out. It's also a really cool building. It's, like, super weird. Um, and I used yesterday as an excuse to submit my, uh, my first, um, my first cover letter submission with my novel to, uh, to an agent. Um, because I've been meaning to start doing that for ages and ages and ages. Um, and, uh, yeah. So th my birthday seemed like a good excuse to start. <laughs> That's okay, rhetorical meow. Uh, as you've seen, I have a hard time not talking about it as well. Um, uh, yeah. Anywho's, um, let's play some games. Ooh, what'd you get? Is that your meatballs? Okay. Okay. Let's let's play some games. It's a writing agent. I am I am I am the proud owner of uh, or the proud author of a of a novel. Um, Featuring, uh, um, featuring a, a fantasy world inspired by uh, Middle Eastern mythology and a um, gay romance between uh, a human character and a uh, and a jinn, uh, jinni rather. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm I'm pretty proud of it, and I've you know I've like I'm at the point where like I've done a bunch of drafts and it's probably not perfect but it's uh it's as good as it's gonna be without outside uh without an outside eye on it because i'm just like every time i change it now it's just different not necessarily better so yeah i mean i like this i'm proud of the book i liked it um it's for like 20s and 30s something women so you know i think like my <laughs> you guys are probably my target audience um, a lot of you, so it's, I don't know, I think it's gonna be cool, and, or I think it's, it's very cool, and I would like to see it published, but, uh, cause I think, you know, we need some diversity, and all the publishers I read are like, you know, we're looking for something more unusual and diverse, and I'm like, this, this seems unusual and diverse, so I hope other people think so too. Um, I guess we'll see. Um, so by the way, game-wise here. Um, you'll recall when we last played, we went into a giant terracotta man who was a dungeon, um, and then he got stuck in some palm trees. He was falling, then we left him and he, uh, he followed us around for a little bit, and then he got stuck in some palm trees, um, and then we went back inside him. And it's creepy as hell and has the worst music. Um, uh, that's just the doctor's office. That's right, I can heal myself at any of these benches by sleeping on them. Don't talk to the bench. Use the bench. Um, it is not called Pounded in the Butt by my Gay Genie. That's what it's about, but that's not what it's called. It's called The Singer of Ice. Um, because it's about this desert culture where they have... Um, the royal family has this ability to... Uh, they, they they speak to the mountain once a year by singing to it, and the mountain fills up with ice, and that like provides their water supply for the year. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm I li I'm very proud of this novel. I like this novel, and I would love to to you know. It's always been my dream to be an author, um, to be a published author, and I'd love to get it published. And I'm working so I'm working on another novel, which I'm not doing for now. I'm not doing nano this year because I just don't have. That's right. Um, I just don't have time. I guess I probably have to go back up to the place where there was that hole in the ceiling and fall through it again. Um, because it was blocked off last time. Um, right, I'm supposed to get a submarine. That's right, I'm trying to get a submarine. Um, and it looks like there's a submarine right there, so. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm working on another novel right now, which is a post-apocalyptic post underwater uh, transsexual dragon riders novel. That's the other thing that I'm writing. So 
I've been writing for a long time, Rhetorical Meow. I have been writing ever since I was a child. Um, and, you know, I've written a lot of really, really bad shit. Uh, like, stuff that... Where the heck is the way up from here? Um, stuff that, like, I literally physically have trouble reading right now. Um, because it's just, it's so painful to look at how bad it was. Um, but, you know, you keep writing, and you keep, you know, editing, and you keep working on stuff, and like anything, with practice, you get better at it occasionally. And I've had, a, you know, I don't know, a couple decades and change of practice at this point. <coughs> and I'm, I'm pretty, uh... I'm pretty happy. Like it's I think I'm I'm think I'm okay now. Like I'm not an amazing uh Did I not say underwater? Yes. Post yeah, post apocalyptic uh, underwater transgender dragon riders, yeah. Technically not dragon riders, they're like sea serpent riders because it's underwater, but basically dragon riders. Um So yeah, uh that's a thing. That's the other thing I'm writing. Um but yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm a like an, an amazing the best writer, but I think by now you know I've written my million I've done my million uh, words at this point right like I've written enough that I've gotten the the really bad stuff out of my system and I'm now doing okay stuff. So I think with with the with a professional help like an editor who can actually like who, who knows the markets and you know can can really help me refine stuff, I think I could do good things. Um, and maybe someday eventually even great things. But we'll see. Ah, fuck. Diamondized is like... The, that's the expensive heal, isn't it? I think that's like... I think that's like the paralyzed from like Final Fantasy. Oh shit, look at him! Where they're like turned to stone. Look at that! That's crazy. Um... Yeah, self self critique can be your own worst enemy, but I I have I have been blessed or cursed with like very high self esteem. So like I'm I I feel like I'm pretty good at being objective and like understanding when the stuff I've done is like terrible versus like not entirely terrible. Um, I tend to also like waffle back and forth. Um, I, I'm having a tough time playing and uh, and uh, talking at the same time today. Um, I wanted to ask about the uh, what? Yes, tell me what this does. Um, okay, yeah, it's the expensive one. That's what I thought. Yeah, the fact that everything turns red makes me think it's the equivalent of being knocked out, which makes me think it's like the Final Fantasy one, where like if everybody in the party gets diamondized, you lose. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I like to think I'm, I'm decently objective about my own work. I, I know that's like technically impossible, but yeah, I guess that's true. But, okay, yeah, so <laughs> I just, I just, you know, I figure I want to write, I just write the sort of thing that like I enjoy reading. And if I enjoy reading it, then at least one person enjoys reading it. And maybe people who enjoy reading the sort of things I enjoy reading will also enjoy it. Um, it's goodbye exit, someday you should enter with courage. So this was blocked last time we were in here. So, let's go out through and see what happens. Yep, now that puts us on here, where we can do this. Talisman ribbon. That, I have no idea what it is, but is probably a good thing that we want because it was hard to get to, and they promised that good things would be in the hard to get to places. So what can we get rid of? Um, 
beef jerky? Okay, no, that's the, just a recipe. Is it? Maybe it wasn't just a recipe. There's also the Psy Caramel, but we, nobody's really low on Psy. And the Molokea Soup. If you drink this, you recover about 80. Alright, let's use that. Um, who's missing the most health? Uh, you're missing none. You're missing none. Shoot! Okay, nobody's missing any health. Um, I guess I'll give Kuehl the Psy Caramel. Because he's... Because I just used, like, 20 of his points. Oh, wait! No! IQ Capsule! That's what I want. Um... Okay. I think I might give it to Party because I think some of the stuff he uses is based on his IQ. Um, whereas I think everybody... I'm not sure what IQ does for anybody else other than him. So... Because this is like a permanent up thing. Yeah. Now we'll get this talisman ribbon. Okay. Now we gotta check what the heck that thing does. Any interest in role-playing games about vampires, ghost-employing corporations, or the children of gods? Um, those all sound interesting. Man, I would love to write for a role-playing setting. I love world-building. That's like my favorite part of writing. So, yeah. Help. Talisman Ribbon. Can only be used by Kazing. When equipped, luck is increased. Uh, okay. Is it better or worse than the stuff she's already wearing, though? Um. Oh, I'm on Kewl, that's why. Um. Okay, it's better than the Mr. and Saturn coin. Let's try this talisman ribbon. And see how it does. Look at all these mushrooms. We would get so much money from the doctor for those. What's the sign say? I set up a telephone line in the dungeon. I wonder if that's controversial. That's um that's the accent I've chosen to adopt for this guy. It's just I don't know. Old vehicle collection. This is my secret hobby. <laughs> Taxi with no engine. Beautiful. Even though the thing doesn't run. Because I like this accent because it's slightly creepy. Rusty bicycle. Rust is the perfect brake. Don't... That's not true, by the way. Don't use rust as your only bicycle brakes. That's a bad idea. This is a gift from Dr. And Donuts. Be careful how you use it. This was the, like, revive everyone device, yeah. Is that directed at me, meow, or at jet lag? Ah. Because, yeah, I would totally talk to authors about submission stuff. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, I'll do that. Um, okay. Party check the broken submarine. Yes, it can still work. Here we go. Oh no, that wasn't that wasn't Brick Road saying it. That was just like that was just narration text. Kill and his friends carried out the submarine that Party fixed. Oh, we're in a submarine now, you guys. That was fast. Oh, this is a cutscene. I'm not moving this. I thought I was controlling it for a second. <laughs> Where is this submarine taking us? Is it into the swamp that we said we were going to go to? 
More importantly, is there a save point there? <coughs> oh, hey, it's Lady Bubble Monkey. And Boy Bubble Monkey. <coughs> Hiya there, Bubble Monkeys. Alright, this must be that swamp. Ring, ring. Ah, yes, of course, a telephone toucan. Those famous telephone toucans. Um, Welp. Okay. Call Dad, and then we might do some escargo express thing. Uh, except I don't have the money to cover them right now, so I'd need an ATM to do that. Dang it. Um, I want to get rid of that. I want to put that Saturn coin in the box. The Stoic Club is a club in the, like, France slash LA city where, um... No, don't... Uh, where, like, we had to... They, they just, like, talk about philosophy all day. And we were doing, um... We had to get, like, a cake maker to leave that place. Um, so her husband would, uh... Use his ship to sail us across to, uh... To, a, to the desert place. Because Earthbound. I still have a bunch of these, uh... Dark chocolates, by the way, because uh, Huck finished all of the, the the little mini bars in there that weren't dark chocolate. So so pardon me while I talk with my mouth full. <laughs> all right. His rhetorical meow um, num, 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 sorry rhetorical meow his twitter description starts with I'm your huckleberry which is not true he's my huckleberry <laughs> Literally, he is my huckleberry. <laughs> it's not literal. It's, it's still a metaphorical huckleberry. I mean, I'm not actually... Yeah, well, you are huckleberry, and you are mine. So, True. literally, you are my huckleberry. <laughs> but I am not a huckleberry. Oh, man, the monkeys run the inn in the forest. You can stay here for free. Okay. So, monkeys are benches, I guess, is what this is teaching me. <clears throat> I assume there is an implied, like, they took me to a place and I stayed there and I didn't just, like, pass out on the floor right at that location. Oh god, it's over our head! This seems unsafe! This seems very unsafe! We are taking damage! Okay. Well, that's, uh, okay. That's a thing. Hi, guy. Um. Well, I want that combat yo-yo, but I need an ATM. Hi, how are you? I'm not a bad guy. Come from the longest. Day. Are you gonna be an ATM for me? Oh, shit. I had to... Uh, I'm gonna have to go through all this again. It was just weird that, like, I selected buy, and then I had to select the buy option again in order to actually do that. Um, okay. Charm coin will be good for him. Oh, I should see if he... he the Mr. Saturn coin might not um, be useful for him. Except that everybody is full up right now. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Uh, who are you? I don't feel it's necessary for us to talk. Okay, then. 
Um, I'm gonna go back to the... Ah, that mole is running away from us. I'm gonna go back to... Um... The phone and call the Escargo Express and get rid of some stuff. <coughs> I'm not going to get rid of the Saturn coin just yet because I actually want to see if I can equip that first. But, in order to switch around items, I have to not be full in every single inventory. So... Oh, shit! But of course I can't afford to pay for it because there's no ATM! God damn it! <sighs> it's okay. I'm, I promise I'm learning. <laughs> So I guess I have to go through some of these deeper areas to get to stuff. I can't use you, present, because it's a banana. I have too much stuff. I need an ATM. Is this one of my teleport options yet? Can I just teleport to a place with an ATM? Like, get rid of some stuff, and then, uh... Also, does Escargo Express have a manual drop-off in one at? Okay. Um, status. No. Psy. Teleport. Um, deep darkness. I believe that is where I am right now. So, that is a good sign for my ability to teleport to other places. Choo. Hotel. Let's get some money. Let's get like, I don't know, 20,000, 2,000, whatever this is. No, 20,000. How much do I have? I've got like 128,000, so I can afford 20,000. Oh, the dr manual drop-off is your sister at home. Good to know. <coughs> okay, let's go home and talk to our sister. I didn't see her, but maybe she's in the room that I don't go into usually. I could also put in, like, the bad key machine, because, like, if I need that, presumably I can just go get it from the, the box in the future. And I haven't been using it for much, it's more a story item. I think this is her room? Yeah, there she is. Oh, it's my line now, oops. Uh, store. Okay, what can we store? Um, the thing is, if I need this exit mouse, I'm not going to be able to go back for it. Bad key machine. Um, and the picture postcard, maybe? I have a feeling I'm gonna need that. <sighs> the key to the tower is, uh, I've used, I might need to get into it again. Um, okay, let's see if, we, if we're going to end up storing this. Um, a 
Okay, this would up the defense significantly, so let's do that. Um, and then I'll just double check that uh, this most recent one wouldn't work on... But I don't think so. I think his is already better. Yeah, that his defense would go down. So we can sell that one. But I can also ask her to store the bazooka. Because I'm not using the bazooka. Okay, I think we're good for now. I should maybe talk to my mom just so I don't get homesick. Unless talking to my mom more often is making me more homesick more easily. But I don't actually know. So I'm just going to take advantage of free healing. Free heals. It's all about the free heals. And delicious french fries. I didn't actually go. There is a place uh, in the Seattle Center that only serves french fries. But we didn't actually go there, believe it or not, for my uh, for my birthday lunch, birthday dinner thing yesterday. Instead, we went to a ramen place called Ramen Man, which is also delicious. A very good vegetarian ramen there. And unlimited free hard-boiled eggs when you order ramen. So, you know, that's good. Let's teleport to the swamp with a fuck ton of money. Um, it's not safe, but we're doing it. Choo! It's not Y fries. It's called like um, Y fries. By the way, would not just have French fries. It would have all kinds of fried food, as well as milkshakes. Um, uh, yeah, definitely jet lag. That would be awesome. Um, but yes, so, uh, theirs is called, like, Cool Guys Fry Bar, I think. Which, they had some okay-looking sauces on their menu, but not the thing that I would have, uh, not, not the, not, like, my favorite sauces, so. Okay. I would like to buy... Combat yo-yo, please. Oh, it was only... It was like less than 2,000, not 20,000. Kazing is gonna have it. <coughs> nice. Yep, sell that. Sell... Uh, the coin? There's like another... Oh, I gave it to Kewl. Um, coin of slumber. Sell it. Yep, have it. Okay, now I think I might actually... <laughs> given how much money I am actually carrying, I probably should... Um, I probably should go back and deposit this. Um... Oh, that's cool, Jetlag. Yeah, I'd love to meet you two. I... I actually still have not met... Um, oh man, this is still better than the Saturn coin. Hmm. Um... I still haven't met Kelso, despite the fact that we live in the same city. Which is very silly. Uh, I don't want to sell the Mr. Saturn coin. I feel like I need that. No, I think we're good. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to put the... I'm going to teleport back. I'm going to put the Mr. Saturn coin in the box. Um, I'm going to deposit this fuck ton of money that I have now. And yeah, we'll be good. Okay. Teleport. One out. Oops. 
Okay, I misjudged that. Misjudged that just a little. Let's try it from here. We were able to do it before, so there must be a play. We, mu we must be able to do it. No! Monkey. Monkey, what are you doing? Okay, how about this? Is this a free pass? Seems like it might be. Alright, oh, which way am I going? How about, how about this? Would, is this unacceptable? Teleport location? I did it before, right? From here, so it's gotta be, there's gotta be a place where it works. Ah, that's still not far enough. Okay. Where did I do it from before? <coughs> what about if I go low? Yeah, this might be it. There we go. Yeah, it's a it's sort of a weird mechanic, right? Jet lag. It's like if you're gonna teleport, you have to have enough room to teleport. <laughs> Which is like, and the upgrade of it is like you don't need as much room to teleport. <laughs> Which is kind of cute. Okay, that's deposit. Um, we'll keep the 200 around. Um, because we might need to, like, do some more Escargo Express or, like, stay in places that require monies or things like that. Now, I can either stay with my mother to up those, like, last whatever, six or eight, uh, uh, PP that I lost, um, <coughs> trying to teleport a bunch and failing, where I could find a butterfly. I don't know if there are any butterflies around here, though. And they are mysterious and unpredictable, so. I could also just go ahead without, um, you're in my way, dog. It's like one XP, but two, two XP each. Um, hello, mother. I could also just go ahead without refreshing them, but you know, like I'm in a new place. I want to face it with full, full magic. Full sigh. <coughs> Alright, this one I know I can do from here. That teleport, though. Good thing I got those monkeys to teach me how to teleport. Okay. Hi, monkey. I want to become a pig. I want to pick a... Okay. So I can use the pig's nose here. Um, which I kind of suspected, but just hadn't gotten around to trying it. Use it. It doesn't seem to be around here. Um, I mean, I have the Hawkeye, so if I'd come here without the Hawkeye, would it have been really dark? Is there, like, is this a place that I can make lighter by using the Hawkeye? Um, let's try that. Sing does have it. Sing use the Hawkeye. Hey, look at that. That's the deeper darkness part of the deeper darkness, I guess. Who the heck is that? Um, also, Biggie Nose. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, well. Oh, shit. Handling fee of as much as you're withdrawing, so you have to pay twice as much to get your money. That's not good. I am glad I went back. Ah, oh, shit. What the heck is that thing? It's a zap eel! Okay. It's very dodgy. Oh man, it has electric attacks, so I can... F yeah, it can do the Franklin badge. Fuck you, I've got a Franklin badge. I like that I don't have to equip that. And that it still works, despite the fact that I basically just got it for that one uh, story thing. So I'm not 100% sure why I'm here in this swamp searching for things. Um, like, there's a magic truffle. It was more that it was like the only direction we could go. I, there might be a, like, a my place here. Hard crocodile. Is he hard from like a life of crime? Like what's the what's the deal? a rock. No problem here. Phew. Okay, well we can breathe a little bit again. Is there anything around here? Nope. I don't know if this is how I'm supposed to be using the piggy nose, but it's how I'm gonna use the piggy nose. There is a beef jerky inside. I have both a zapiel and a hard crocodile. I wonder if fire will be effective against them. Yeah, seems to be. Hit Kewl, hit Kewl. Yes! <laughs> damage reflect. Gotta love that damage reflect, though. I should probably eat something. I haven't had breakfast yet. Hey, party leveled up. No, I don't want to go in the deeper water because I think that causes me more damage. What the hell is that thing? Oh, it's a photo opportunity is what it is. For fuck's sake. Demonic Petunia. Okay. <coughs> That's... I think we're starting to be a little overpowered, possibly. Kawik? Village attendas comes nobody. Far it's because Queek. Okay, nobody comes to Village Tenda because it's far away. Hey, we got an IQ capsule. Might as well just use it. Okay. It's possible that if the others got a high enough IQ, they'd be able to use, like, the bomb-type weapons. Um... Which might be useful. <coughs> you are fast, little eel. Very fast. It's 
suppose I could just set this to auto fight and see what happens. We need to heal up Kazing. No, don't talk. Sigh. And party. And maybe myself. It's only five. I can afford some heals. <coughs> okay. Hey, it's a it's a helicopter from that guy who we hate. They took the engine out. Oh hey, it's one of those angry trees. <coughs> Hostile elder oak. Oh shit. I hope it's not the, like the last one that catches on fire when it's uh yeah. That's such a weird thing, like, it does a ton of damage, but only until, like, you get through the text at the end of the... I guess it's a big problem if, you, if you're in a fight with multiple enemies, you want to make sure to catch that one last. Hey, life noodles. I do like me some life noodles. Hello, weird, um, fish thing. Manly fish! Oh, it's not just any fish, it's a manly fish! I'm sorry, fish. You're just too manly. He's like Undine, basically. It's like a fish person with a spear. Or Undine, I guess, is how most people pronounce it. I've always pronounced it Undine, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it is correctly pronounced Undine. Although I think the... Uh, a mythological creature is an undine, but heal kazing so she doesn't die. Cause we don't want her to die in a swamp. Okay. I wonder if the truffle is somewhere around here. <coughs> I wonder what happens when it is around here. Does it, like, give me a direction? It's a souvenir coin. Nice. Oh shit, did I fail to put the Mr. Saturn coin in the, uh... I did, didn't I? Well, dang it. How much does a banana heal? 25. Okay, I can use that right now. Um... Goods... that to Kewl. So let's see if Kewl can equip it. Equip. Seems to make no difference. Okay. <coughs> Hello, Oak. Undine? I could see... I guess I could see Undine. Jetlag, we're talking about the character from, um... Uh, Undertale. There's a character named Undyne. Uh, um, or possibly Undine. Or possibly Undyne. Um, or Undine, even. Oh, good, we got a viper. Snakes, that's what I always want to pick up and put in my bag. Live snakes. <coughs> Oh no, even slimier little pile.
Yeah, that's how it's spelled. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm a badass. We level up. Leveling up. Leveling up. Leveling up. I wish Quixuma was here. Did I... Is this the way I came from? Oh, apparently not. <coughs> Somehow, that did not engage both of them in the fight. You'd probably pronounce it Undine. Yeah, that's, like I said, that's the way I pronounce it, but like every streamer I've ever watched pronounces it Undine, so I don't know. <laughs> and to be fair, s slight spoilers, but in genocide mode, um, she has a form called Undine the Undying, which, uh, you know, makes more sense if you pronounce it Undine. So... If you haven't seen a genocide run, by the way, I recommend, like, checking one out on YouTube. I don't recommend playing it yourself, because it seems like it's, like, crazy ridiculous hard. Um... Hey, Trumpet! Nice to see ya! No, the open the present. There we go. Rock candy! Wait. Are we all full up again? Really? Uh... I don't need these goddamn snakes. These motherfucking snakes in my motherfucking inventory. Did I not sell the Oh no. The yo yo's what I have equipped. So I can sell this charm coin. Next time I'm at a merchant. I can use this on Kewl, I guess. I don't actually know what rock candy does. I assume it's just also a healing item. When you eat this, it will increase either speed, guts, vitality, IQ, or luck. Huh. Permanently? If it's not permanently, I'm not going to use it, so... Let's give it to Kewl. Kewl's speed went up by one. Cool. Ah, what animals are you house sitting? F are you uh, uh, taking care of while house sitting? We recently had a uh, had some friends leave town, and we were pet sitting their corgi puppy for the weekend. That was a lot of fun. He's very cute. His name is Hobbs. Yeah, yeah, manly fish. I see you. We got this. Oh man, Kewl's level 60, which is like so much crazy higher than everybody else. God, he moves so goddamn slow here. That looks like that could be a boss. Maybe. You may have forgotten, but burp, I'm the return of Belch. I've fought you before. Yep. Belch has also changed his name to Puke. Okay. <coughs> Don't you think that's an incredibly masculine taunt to throw at you? The fact that you would ask me that question implies to me that you are insecure about your masculinity. Tiny puppy and two kitties! That sounds so awesome! <laughs> Master barf attacked. Okay, well. I 
Let's see if it's vulnerable to paralysis. Uh, wait a minute. Is this just paralyze all? Yeah, okay. Kazing. Shield all of us. And you can just, well, spy for now. Defense, defense, doesn't say vulnerabilities, but paralysis is still apparently a thing we can do. Bash it. No, wait. Um, shoot, I don't know which healing recovers nausea. freeze? Why not? And you can shoot it. <coughs> hey, we did it. Okay. Bash. Uh. Uh, I, I will, I will finish, uh, even so, not being, not being a Yorkie doesn't mean you're not adorably tiny. Um, I am, I am, uh, I am going to finish this game eventually. Um, it's just, uh, you know, suddenly, <laughs> Quixim swooped in from the sky, you guys. Use this new power, Psy Star Storm. I'm just saying that because we already won. Tch, way to steal our thunder. We were doing fine without you, Quicksim. A Casey Bat. Okay, that sounds like something that uh, Kill can use. Yeah. This is, this is, I don't know if you're familiar, Trumpet, but this is the stream where I stream things that are just impractically long to stream. That's like the point of this stream. <laughs> is how, t how like completely impractical it is. Wow. Okay. Uh, I am full up again. Um, okay. Well, let's, um... Let's drop these pair of dirty socks. I don't think we need that. What's the brainstone? Miraculous stone that enables you to concentrate without using your own brain. This is accomplished just by keeping this item. It's great because if, okay, so it makes you never unable to use size. So we really want probably Kazing to have that. Or maybe Kewl, because we always want to be able to heal, no matter what. Well, Quixim is also a healer. I guess he can keep it for now. Um, okay. So, let's give something of Kazing's. Um, maybe the key to the tower to Quixim. And then, we'll give the Casey Bat... Uh, oh, I should have given Kewl something. That's what would have made more sense. Give this to Kazing. And then Kazing can give the Casey Bat to Kewl. And then we will equip, maybe, the Casey Bat. Holy shit, yes we will. Oh man, pictures! I want to see pictures. Alright. Uh, God, this swamp though. Where is the exit to this swamp? I wonder if I can teleport from here. I guess I have Quicksim now, so... Um, I can teleport from a small area if I need to. Um, Alright, I'm about to get back to land here.
Oh, hey, there's a cave. Okay, that seems ominous. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a short break. Uh, I am going to go get something very quick for breakfast. Just have like a piece of toast or something. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll play for another little bit. Um, turns out we are not recording the podcast today, so I'll have a little bit of extra time uh, to keep streaming this morning. Uh, so I will see you all back in just a moment. <laughs> 